Hello and welcome back. In this video we are going to improve our skills in controlling the motors of our robot starter kit. Here's the starter kit that I bought. It, you can probably use, sim, use this video to program other robots that use Arduino technology as well. In order to use the mBlock software, you have to download and install it. Then you can program using mBlock your robot starter kit. So let's get started. I'm going to minimize that. Start our mBlock software. As a reminder, by default, it starts up in standard mode. I want to go ahead and change to Arduino mode to make it harder to make mistakes because items, scripts that do not apply to our robot are, are grayed out, so we cannot choose them. In addition to that, we have a convenient button that says Upload to Arduino, which is the board on our robot. So we start a new project by default. Uh, what we want to do today is control the motors. Specifically, we want to learn how to move in all directions. In a starter video, we only moved forward. So let's learn how to tour, how to turn, as well as move backwards. Let's go to robot and start our Orion program. And let's go ahead and drag over set motor one. Let's learn a little bit more about this development environment. There are certain functions here that we did not use, but we can. For example, if we right click on a specific block, we could duplicate or delete the block or add a comment. So in a comment, we could say move, for example. Comments don't really have any value other than it allows us to document our software for somebody else. So now let's see how, uh, if, how to fix a mistake. For example, what we really want to do is start with 10 second wait. So we can right click and delete the motor control. Then go to control and drag the weight over. And we're going to wait 5 seconds. Now let's go to robot and drag our motor speed. And this time we're going to duplicate. And drag it to connect with the previous one. As you can see, as we move closer, the blocks kind of snap into each other. We have to do that. If we leave it like this, our program will stop here and this block will never run. I keep saying the word program and I think we should talk for a second about what that means. Program is a set of instructions for our robot in this case. In more general terms, that's all, that's all software is. It's computer instructions. They are written typically in some language that computer understands and humans just have to learn. mBlocks makes it very easy because the way you write software is not by typing, but essentially dragging and dropping. If you remember, to move forward, we have to set some speed on both motors to some value. In order for the robot to keep going, we simply need to wait. Let's duplicate our weight block. Uh, unfortunately, it duplicated also everything underneath, which is okay. We're going to go forward for three seconds, and then we want to stop. If you recall, stopping means setting the speed to zero, which will stop all the movement of our motors. Now we recreated our first program. Pause, go at speed 100, which is about medium speed. Minimum value is up zero, and it goes, according to this drop down as high as to 55. Now, how do we go backwards? That's the question. Say instead of stopping, we want to move backwards. Well, interestingly enough, 
you simply need to change the speed to a negative value. In this case, I'm going to just pick minus 100. The way you think about it is, if you want to move forward, you set the speed to some high value above zero. If we move backwards, we change the direction of that speed. And to move in opposite direction, we add a minus sign, converting the speed value to a negative value, minus 100. As I was experimenting with this specific robot, it became apparent that the backward speed on a robot is somewhat smaller than the forward speed. In other words, when I set value to minus 100, it's not going to move as far backwards in three seconds as it did moving forward. So if I wait for three seconds after I move backward, I won't end up in the same spot where I started. So before we go too much further, I think we should save our project and we're going to give it some value. It's kind of convenient to put all of your programs into one folder, makes it easy to find. And I'm going to call this one video two. Now we need to connect to COM3 and now we can upload this program to Arduino. As in the first example, you will see that this process will take about a minute. So let's, let's wait and let this process finish. Uh, it's almost done. Last thing you see is writing and reading. And now it says upload finished. So let's remember to unplug our USB cord. And in this case, let me make um, an iPhone video of what I'm doing. In this case, here we go. Here's our robot. First thing we want to do is pull out this USB cord. It'll turn off. Then what I'm going to do is put our robot on the floor and flip the on switch. Now it's going to wait for five seconds. Then it's going to go forward for three seconds. Then it's going to stop and go backward for unlimited amount of time. And that's because I did not set the speed to zero. Let's do that. Let's set our speed to zero. In this case, we're going to drag the motor speed here again twice. And we're going to set to M2. Now I'm not going to re-record that, but instead I'm going to plug my robot back in. The light will come on. And I'm going to reconnect it back. Now I'm going to save my project. It's kind of important as you work uh, on your software is to save it periodically. So if your computer crashes, you don't lose many hours of work. So if I upload it, this actually compiles the program, which converts our code to language that our board or computer will understand. And then it's going to use USB connector to upload it to the Arduino board, which is what the robot does. And now uh, we can click close. And then we can run a robot and you, if you follow along, you can go ahead and do the same. And what you will see is a robot moving forward at a speed of 100 and then moving back or it's at roughly the same speed and then stopping. The backward speed seemed to vary today a little bit from a previous day. And I'm kind of wondering if uh, batteries affect the speed a little bit. So now let's talk about turning. We've already seen how we can move forward and backward. What 
the way that works, if you look at your robot close by, you will see that one of the motors is connected to the right side of your robot here and the other motor right here is connected to the other side so if we move uh, both motors in the same direction either back backwards or forwards the robot is moving in that direction so what do we do if we want to turn how about we simply what we really want is to for one wheel move in one direction and the other wheel to move in the opposite direction that way we will force the robot to turn in place because essentially the right side and the left sides will be fighting with each other essentially turning the robot let's verify that so we're gonna set m1 to 100 and m2 to minus 100 that will turn that will if we did everything right we'll make robot turn and of course if we don't change the speeds again it will turn infinitely so to fix that problem we're gonna do a wait and this time we're just gonna do one second and if you recall to stop the robot we have to set the motor speeds to zero and we're going to drag them again so let's go ahead and save and reconnect our robot and if you follow along go ahead and do that reconnect the robot using your usb cable select com3 again and click upload to arduino in another minute if everything worked out okay we should see our robot do the following wait for five seconds move forward at a speed 100 which is just a random number essentially relatively fast do so for three seconds and the reason it says that is because we wait for three seconds after three seconds we're going to reverse the motors by reversing the speed to negative speed we're going to go for three seconds backwards then we're going to leave the motor two speed as minus 100 but change the motor one speed to a hundred this will go for another second and that will force our robot to turn in place i'm not going to record that but i will give it a try unplug the robot turn it on and while i'm waiting you can see that after i wait for one second to robot to run in opposite directions i mean to wheels to run in opposite directions uh, then it will stop which did not really happen in my case and that's because i forgot to set m2 speed to a zero so let me save the project now i have to carefully pick up the robot and turn turn it off and here's we learning an important lesson sometimes the software we write does not work as expected what do we do about it so first of all we have to observe what is happening and what i observed is that the robot continued to turn what that means to me that i did not change something to set the motor speed to zero and as i looked at my software and kind of visually inspected it that's where i noticed that i forgot to set m2 to zero i'm going to save it before i upload back then i'm going to wait a minute while my software is uploading and then i'm going to give it another test again i'm not going to record it again because it's just not really that exciting but you guys uh, can go ahead and uh, do it while I'm waiting as well upload finish message comes up I'm going to close it unplug turn the robot on put it on the floor one thing I forgot to mention is that it doesn't seem to move very well on carpets now everything worked as expected so what I saw is that it turned for about a second and that was 
about halfway to the right. So now we know that when M1 is set to positive and M2 to negative, our robot turns right. So what do we want to do if we want to turn robot to the left? Okay, in case you, I didn't hear you. Obviously, I didn't hear you guys talk. So we're going to fix that. So one thing you've noticed that you can always insert blocks, which makes it a little bit easier to fix the mistakes. And I'm going to add another weight here. So what I'm going to do is turn back to the left. So it's obvious now what we need to do to turn to the left. If M1 100 and M2 minus 100 means to the right, if we do the opposite, which is M1 minus 100 and M2 100, we should turn to the left. And if we do it for the same one second, what we should observe is that a robot will turn to the right and then immediately turn to the left because we're not moving in any specific direction in this case. Why is this important? Because this is really the most fascinating, I feel, thing about our robot. It make it move. This is probably number one feature. So before we go too much further, we kind of have to master our ability to force the robot to move in one of those four directions. Uh, to the right, to the left, forwards and backwards. Forwards and backwards we already studied. If we want the robot to move in any other direction, what you have to do is break that task into two tasks. One would be to turn either right or left. Those are the only option for some period of time, uh, which you can accomplish with a weight. And then resume the forward or backwards movement uh, entirely up to you. But that's how you make the robot to move in every direction. I'm going to do another quick test run. For, it's moving forward. In case you can hear it backwards. It's going to turn right. It's going to turn left. And it's going to stop. This is enough for this lesson. Just to summarize. To make the robot move forward, we have to set the motor 1, the, called M1, and motor 2, called M2, to specific speed. If we want to move backwards, we simply use minus the speed. One thing I didn't show you is that you can also type in this window. So I can actually type minus sign and 50 to change the speed to 50. That way you can change the speed. So as you experiment with your robot, try to set the speed to say 200 and see if it goes much faster. Make sure you stop it after some number of seconds so it doesn't crash. And one important thing that you would notice is unless you make another change to the motor speed, either positive or negative, the motor will continue to turn at the last set speed. As a result, if you want your robot to stop, your last task would be to set the speed to zero. All right. Good work, guys. I'm going to go ahead and um, now wrap up our lesson and I'll see you next time.